in the um, AP Chemistry Curriculum Framework, uh, in one of the little uh, exclusion statements, they mention that students do not need to memorize the exceptions to the opt-out principle. For example, uh, you know, there are a couple of these in here. So if we were to talk about chromium and molybdenum, okay, and uh, let's get a better color. So chromium and molybdenum. Okay, also uh, copper, silver, and gold. They do not follow the rules as we normally see. So like if we get to chromium, you would expect it to be 4S2-3D4, but it's actually 4S1-3D5. And copper, you would expect it to be 4S2-3D9, but it's actually 4S1-3D10. So the idea here is, you know, why are those, you know, happening? Um, they're saying we don't have to memorize them anymore. In the old days, they'd say, okay, copper, just memorize, you know, that this is the situation, you know, and if you see it, put that one in. Uh, but they do say in the rationale that if you were given, if the student were given one of these, they ought to come up with some kind of an explanation for why that happens. So how do we explain those? If we go and take the... Um, orbital filling diagram, the key piece is that the energies of these orbitals actually is not, are not static. You know, that as you put more protons in, they change their energy. So I'm just going to, uh, there was a really nice animation by John Gelder and his group uh, over at Oklahoma State, and this is what it looks like. So I've uh, captured the screens and put it on here. So I'm going to run through, as we add more protons, okay, watch what happens to the uh, energies. So this is hydrogen, now helium. Okay, now so start putting more atoms in, the protons in, then we can see that the energies are changing and that they shift back and forth. We're going to go back over this in a minute, but I'm just going to give you a kind of feeling for the fact that they're not static. You know, as you put things in, things shift around. Already, I think that's the last one. Okay, so let's go back way to the beginning. Oops, too far. Okay, so <clears throat> as you put a couple of these in, like hydrogen and helium, okay, because they're only in that first shell, you know, there's no shielding going on, so uh, all the two S's and two P's, three S, three P, three D's, those are all the same energy. Okay, but as you start to get, you know, shielding on here, then a 2P is different than a 2S, okay, and that still follows our rules, because, you know, this is what we teach, that 2S and 2P, and then we go to 3S, 3P, so these are all filling just exactly the way we'd expect them to fill, fill, and then we get the 4S, but notice here, okay, just as we did it, as we start putting things in here to the 4s, these 3Ds, you know, the relative energy difference between the 4S and the 3Ds, those are changing, okay, and as we add things in, then, you know, they actually get to this point right here, here's an important point, okay, so when you have vanadium, okay, there are two of them in the 4S, and three in the 3D, okay, but they're very, very, very close in energy. So when you get one more, now they're in pretty much the same energy, and so instead of having two in the 4S and four in the 3D, it's sort of like Hun's rule that you're just going to put one in each of those six orbitals. You know, the repulsion of the two electrons in the 4S you know, is enough to, you know, drive that electron over. It's going to be a little bit lower energy to have everybody spread out in individual orbitals than to have them in the 4S, because the 4S is not significantly lower energy than the 3D at this point. Okay, then we go back and we start doubling everybody up, so not a big surprise. Okay, but then here's nickel. We're about to go to copper. Now for copper, you know, we say, well, what's going to happen is that uh, electron, you know, kind of jumps from here over to here. And there really is something, okay, you know, that a lot of times we say, oh, you know, there's something special about having all the d orbitals half filled or all filled. And there really is, and it's something called um, symmetry. It's not a very big amount of energy. You know, sometimes the students say, oh, yeah, yeah, everything wants to be, you know, totally filled there. You know, and it's not that big of a deal, uh, but it is, it does exist. And it's enough, you know, these guys are not very different in energy, so it's enough to get this electron to fill up here at the 3D so that we have the, uh, 
uh, 4S13D10, and that's why you know copper is not following the rules. Okay, so one of the big ideas here is that the energies between these orbitals, okay, is not static. You know, we draw the orbitals and say that, you know, 4s and then 3d and those kind of things, but, uh, you know, they do shift back and forth as they are uh, getting more and more protons, and that causes some little uh, issues here and there, parts following, you know, the rules about filling these up. Okay, and that's, you know, as much as we're going to go on to this, it's just the idea that there are exceptions, and the exceptions come from the fact that the orbitals' energies are not static, and that different things can happen there. And I just think it's important for students to know that, you know, there's a little bit more than the rules, the simple rules that we teach. Okay, and that's the idea.